gonna go with <laughs> against the fruit. Hey all, Amanda here, and welcome to episode 41 of Great Beer Adventure. Today we have an awesome show for you on Beer Lawyers with Colin Hay of Veril Dana right here in Portland. They actually have a division set up for breweries. It boggles my mind, yet makes so much sense all at the same time. This episode is brought to you by Oak Hill Beverage in Scarborough, Maine. You can actually find some of the beers that we drink in this very episode over at Oak Hill. They also have an amazing selection of wine, cider, and mead. Make sure you head over there and grab a drink or two. It'll almost feel like we are drinking together. For now, let's get started learning about why it is important that beer lawyers exist. Everybody, today I am sitting at Novari Res. It's cold outside, but we are in a warm, toasty atmosphere. You can hear lots and lots and lots going on in the background because tonight is also, by chance, Liquid Riot's company party. I am sitting at the table today, a whole table full of people. It's myself, and I've got Dano to my left. Of course I do. You're my left-hand guy. And then we have Catherine back on, and she's still... Working out some kinks, still new, so make sure that we uh, give her some love. And today, our special featured guest is Colin Hay of Veraldina here in Portland, Maine. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, really nice to come inside on a snowy, cold evening uh, in the dead of winter. Yeah, to drink beer. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, there for a minute, it seemed like winter was over. Unfortunately, yeah. And then it wasn't. <laughs> yes. Very much. Like like it happens every time in Maine, you know, what's that super cliched saying, if you don't like the weather in wait Maine, a wait a minute. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this is actually, hopefully when this plays, it's a little bit warmer and people can pretend that... Winter is far, far behind them. <laughs> we're hoping. We're hoping that can happen. Um, this is the part of the show where I actually tell you what I Googled about you. Oh, okay. Um, first off, i got to tell you, you're not the only Colin Hay. <laughs> there is a Scottish-Australian mu- musician that was trying to infiltrate all of my searching. Yes, that he- is 100% correct. Even when you put in Maine, he came to Westbrook, and he put Portland, Maine, yep. and something about Bare Naked Ladies shows up. Yes, yeah, he played, uh, I think, last year, I think, uh, at the Bangor Waterfront with the Bare Naked Ladies. He is uh, the lead singer of the band Men at Work, uh, and now has a solo show, or solo uh, act. He was on Scrubs a lot. I don't know if you oh, really? uh, ever watched that show. He also, like, physically appeared on Scrubs, uh, besides his music, <laughs> and... Uh, you know, what's odd about that to me is that it, I don't even know another person with the last name Hay who's particularly famous, but Colin, I combined Colin Hay, and that's the only famous person with the last name Hay I know, so it's kind uh, of odd. What I think is so funny is we also had uh, Chris Schofield from Barreled Souls on, and there is another Chris so- Schofield that is famous, and he knew all about them, <laughs> just like you did. With, you could probably tell me exactly like how old he is, like where he was born, everything, right? You know yeah, all this. Yeah, uh, this has come up, I'd say, in at least 60% of job interviews I've ever been on, uh, or just interactions with new people I meet. Like, it's uh, A lot of times it happens with credit cards, when people read credit your, your credit card. It's, you know, something to talk to people about. I don't mind it, so... Well, that's good. Um, other than that, I found your law, law firm website. So <laughs> you're in the craft beverage industry. Yes. In lawyering. Yes, lawyering. I use technical terms here, like that very is, precise. That is the official term. All right, it's called cool. lawyering. Um, you have passed the both the Maine and the Massachusetts bar exams. Yes. So you can represent Maine and Massachusetts breweries? Yeah. So representing, you can represent people beyond that. What getting into the more technical parts of it uh that just means that i can enter into courts or you know sign certain types of documents in those states uh i can 
advise clients in other states on generally applicable federal laws or you know other state issues just as long as I don't officially practice law in those states mm -hmm. uh, because then you run into problems so it's kind of a gray boring lawyerly area but well there are a number of good places here in Maine and a number of good places in Massachusetts so you're probably okay just yeah, absolutely. doing your lawyering there yeah I, that's that's generally what I've done so far perfect and um, you also went to college in both Massachusetts yes. and in Maine. Yes, yes. The uh, other order, though. Yes, college first at uh, Bowdoin and then uh, traveled all the way down to Boston uh, was, for how, law school. How was that trip? It was a pretty long one. Uh, you know, it really was. Uh, I got lost along the way, you know, took a couple months. You know. Took a couple months? Yeah. That is... Took a wrong turn, you know. That yeah. that's trouble right yeah. there. Yeah. Nobody let Colin drive them anywhere. No. That's a bad one. Yes. Um, that's all I found. Yeah, that sounds about. Uh, hey, that's good. It's. Uh, I'm glad I'm not that uh, easy to find on Google. Yeah, and you have Colin Hayes, the musician, to thank for that. Yeah, it's kind of like an insulator, you know. Yeah, yeah. He, very much so. So I think at this point we're gonna jump into round one, and Catherine is gonna take this round. Hi guys. So we are jumping into round one. Um, I'm gonna ask the question: What are you drinking? So Colin. What are you drinking? <laughs> uh, I'm going with the classic Allagash White. Um, it's sort of my go-to, and uh, decided that that's what I was in the mood for tonight. That, that, that is a good one. It's pretty readily available around. Um, we are at Navari, so it's obviously no fruit here. But are you a pro fruit or a, against the fruit? Uh, gonna go with. A, <laughs> against the fruit. Against the fruit. Okay, no slices good. of oranges for you. <laughs> no, no yeah, none no. of that. None of that. It's 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 hard. It's a hard call. But I am generally I don't eat the fruit, so I just I don't think it adds anything. So, but that's just me. Yeah. No. I I, I understand that. But you always get a check. Yeah. Fair enough. Can fair I enough. ask you why Allagash White is your go-to? Well, uh, I think the it was actually the first beer I had coming out of college when I, all I drank was terrible, terrible beer. <laughs> and that, that showed me that beer could be something else besides I won't name names, but you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, and I've sort of stuck with it. It sort of has like that sort of nostalgic, brings me back feeling, but also it just, you know, uh, on a regular in and out basis, it's good every time and it's, uh, I always know that, that that'll, that'll be what I'm looking for that night. So, yeah, yeah, they're very consistent. Yeah, I mean, ridiculously so. There's never anything except for all their funky beers, and those are all true. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. clean, it's fresh, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Amanda, what do you got going on over there? So, I chose to go with the Banded Horn Luminaire. Uh, it's a pretty tasty beer. Um, Navarre says that it is a hoppy blonde lager with a Zaka and. No, I can't tell you the other kind of hops. I'm going to just skip over that <laughs> just one. Just skip over the hops? Yeah, it's like hers butcher or something. I don't even I, don't, I have no idea. We'll fix that one in the editing. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we won't. No, we won't. <laughs> um, but I like this one. It's really good. It comes in cans, so you can actually have it at home pretty easily. And I enjoy a good can of beer. Yeah. I, I pour it out normally, like, into a glass, but... If you're out on the front lawn with the kids, it's a lot easier to have cans than glass, which kind of says something bad about me, probably, that I'm out on the front lawn <laughs> with the kids drinking beer. But, you know, we're just going to go with it. So we're going to see you with a can of that on the front lawn, like now, dead of February. If they're playing outside, I probably need an insulator, so. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good parenting. Go parenting. I win. You won. You did win that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about you? Um, so I am drinking a Stone Fla Face, sorry, redo, <laughs> Stone Face slash tributary rye porter uh, from New Hampshire. Um, I'm all about the porters uh, in the winter, so are most people. Um, it's great. Our server recommended it to me because it was a less sweet porter. Um, so... It, uh, Navari describes it as roasty, and I'm going to agree with that. It's pretty pretty spicy, kind of a fiery taste, but nice and dark. Yeah, yeah that'd like be it. the rye coming out. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 
fiery spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Trinitary is actually here in Maine. Oh, uh, we're crossing borders. Yeah, and it's like border, <laughs> it's not wars, it's the opposite. Border okay, okay. love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little border Wait, love what's going it? on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good beer, it's a good beer. Um, not too heavy. I'm satisfied. I'm excited to finish it. Good. Yeah. Anybody have anything they would like to say? Any facts about any breweries that this would be a great time to say it? Because I don't. I'm just putting you guys on the spot. Oh, no. Mm. About the breweries that we're drinking? <laughs> or anything that you would like our viewer, or listeners. I would say viewers, but they're not viewers. They not could yet. be. We're not not yet. watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll be famous and all over TV. <laughs> um, before we do that, though, Dana's going to have to trim up the beard just a little bit. <laughs> He's leaving. He's adding He's gone. Um, so let's move to round move, two. Move on. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So round two. The reason we're here, the main event, beer and law. I don't know. Okay. Sometimes I say this and it sounds so mean and I don't mean it as mean, but I really don't know why you need to exist because at, not you personally, <laughs> My parents asked me that that question. Why do you exist? And no, they do I told do them it was not. their fault. But. <laughs> they should be able to answer that. <laughs> you think. You would think. <laughs> but, like, why? So, at Veraldana, there is a division for craft beverage industry people, right? Yes. And why is that important? So, I think that question actually has a more complicated answer than it might seem up front. Uh, one of the... Th- it actually goes to the sort of the root of the changing legal industry uh, in the sense that a lot of the old practice was less organized around industry groups uh, and more organized around uh, having a sort of single client and doing everything for them. Uh, you know, so a client would come in and you'd shift them off to your corporate department or your real estate department or your litigation department. And it wouldn't necessarily have a cohesive uh, sort of organization within the firm. Uh, whereas now, I think you're seeing it in, uh, actually a fair amount of uh, other, there are some other firms in, in town that are doing similar things, uh, that you have this uh, highly specialized client, uh, breweries, distilleries, wineries, uh, facing a highly regulated industry with very specialized legal needs, uh, that it becomes necessary to give the best service possible to have each people people in each subspecialty have a broader understanding of the specific client's needs so the one way of, of thinking about it is uh, a brewery uh, you might need a uh, an employment lawyer who has some knowledge of uh, working with breweries distilleries wineries because the law is affecting a brewery or a distillery uh, for their employees, they have to, you know, certain age restrictions, uh, you know, different federal statutes come into play. And those kind of things wouldn't necessarily be apparent unless you knew a little bit about working with breweries, distilleries, wineries. And I think that's why uh, you have uh, these industry groups uh, like we do at our firm. Um, so what are some of the other industries like in your firm? So we another industry group that we have in the firm uh, is uh, the Arctic Practices Group. So, Wait, what? The Arc- yeah. Uh, so they represent penguins and polar bears? Primarily. Um, you'd be surprised how litigious penguins are. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, I mean. But no, so one of the recent developments um, that a lot of people, I think next year there's a conference uh, with the Arctic circle countries that it's going to be held in Portland. Uh, Maine is actually extremely well positioned in uh, to take advantage of the uh, recently uh, navigable Northwest Passage, um, which will open up shipping routes from Asia and uh, primarily Asia uh, across uh, the top of Canada and into Maine rather than, you know, the e- either going all the way uh, across the uh, South Pacific uh, over under Africa or going through the uh, Panama Canal. So Maine's actually in a pretty great spot. Eastport has the like lar- best naturally deep port left on the eastern seaboard, something ah. like that. But long story short, uh, the Arctic Practice Group, the Arctic and Maritime Practice Group, uh, is poised to sort of represent 
uh, people who are looking to get into that area and handle everything from their employment to their corporate work to their uh, environmental work to their em uh, employee work. So it's 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 sort of a uh, more siloed, efficient process, I would say. Um, okay, so if I was Brewery X way back when, I would come to your law firm and I would have to go to different places? Yeah. Is so, that, like, within the law firm, but yeah, is that how it would be? Yeah, if you came, so if you came to uh, uh, Veril Dana back in the day, you, you'd normally have a partner contact and then that partner contact would sort of excuse me, shepherd you around the firm and sort of connect you with the people that could help you with various legal issues uh, who wouldn't necessarily specialize in anything brewery-related but would be a general corporate specialist or a, a general uh, employment litigation specialist or something like that. So it was like a shepherd. They would take me where I need to go. Yeah. Now, today, if I came in and I'm Brewery Y, yeah. and it's now I would have a whole group that would yeah, so, I would be within, and you all know my laws? Yes, yeah, so that's that's the idea. You'd, have, you'd, you'd still have the same partner contact or you know, client contact at the firm, and, but that person would be able, like, it would already be set who you would need to go to. So, you know, uh, Tawny Alvarez would handle your employment. She's uh, an associate in our employment group, and she would help you handle any employment matters that come up. Um, Charlie Bacall, uh, a partner in our intellectual property group, would handle your, you know, trademarks, IP, that kind of stuff. But they're still within the brewery. They, so they are. They have. It's like a. It's um, a Venn diagram. Yeah. So yes, <laughs> yes, uh, a Venn diagram. The the brewery group. Uh, you could be. So Charlie, for example, is the you know head of our intellectual property group. The brewery group is a subgroup that sort of has a branch coming off. So he's okay. also. Uh, in the brewery group, um, it's sort of it's sta it's a standalone group that takes people from every other or most other practice areas. Okay, and now so why why are the laws or what are the laws that are kind of different between me being a, a penguin and a brewer? Penguin and a brewer. Uh, those <laughs> well, are the Arctic, sure. the Arctic stuff. Like what? Like why? What are some of the brewery laws that you have to be aware of? Is really what I'm asking. So yeah, uh, I'm, that that's a question that is obviously important. One of the things it's it's both not only having uh, an awareness of the specific laws that uh, apply to breweries, distilleries, wineries, uh, primarily breweries uh, for for our purposes, uh, but. Uh, understanding the business concerns and the the more practical considerations, having a, a knowledge and an understanding of what the client needs on a ground level basis, not just abstract legal questions. So, um, you know, but for specific laws, you, you know, you have everything from distribution agreements and distribution law to the the I mean, the primary culprit of all this regulatory complexity is the three tiered system, which I'm sure you've heard of. Yes. Uh, that that. That sort of has tentacles. The the tentacles of the three tiered system end up in everything, really, from uh, intellectual property all the way through, you know, to corporate and distribution to employment and beyond. Uh, it, it, the the effects can be seen on uh, on a number of levels. This is all really. I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. Sure. Um, so, if I'm starting a brewery, then would that be the time that I would want to kind of talk to you? Yeah, that's a great time to come talk to someone like me, um, because uh, something really amazing happened with a Liquid Riot party. I don't know what it is, but it, I, I either bet that they're, or they're really excited that we're opening a brewery. I think I think that's that's really what's yeah. going on. They heard the the seed planted. Yeah, yeah. They're like, and they're yeah. cheering. <laughs> Another. Brewery Another in one. Town. <laughs> uh, so yes, that's that's a great time because what that allows, uh, what a lot of people starting breweries face is they have, you know, very, very immediate goals. They have to, you know, make this filing, do the, uh, you know, get their product in line, get their production up, get their space leased, and it's hard to see the sort of larger goals that you might need to keep in mind. And that's something, you know, by talking to a, a, someone who specializes in brewery law, they can sort of 
help you figure out the path forward and identify areas that are going to be problems if you don't take care of them or identify areas well you can you can push this off for now and focus on this um, so coming in to start even if it's just for you know a uh, a short meeting just to get an idea of the lay of the land is really, really valuable. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are worried because whenever you talk to a lawyer, they feel like you're automatically going to get billed for $10,000 that, you know, just for talking to someone. And I lawyer, understand that. Yeah. I have that fear in my own life. Uh, of like, course. Ah, you're a lawyer. Do we have to pay you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> to be on the podcast. Which, yes. We do. do. Uh, Dang it. Unfortunately. No. Uh, We're like negative. Like already. <laughs> you can sue us for everything we have. Uh, it's three mics. <laughs> That, I bet these these mics are pretty nice. We so. can get something for Jana's glasses. Yeah, yeah. I bet we could get something for Jana's beard. <laughs> <laughs> He's leaving the table again. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I, I know for for us at Veral Dana, we you know initial meetings and sort of just it, it never hurt. We don't charge for that kind of thing to sort of get an understanding of what's going on, what you need, uh, and you know initial meeting before you you're not a, you're not. You haven't signed up for anything yet until, you know, we'll talk about that on a subsequent day if you decide to go forward with this. But so people shouldn't be afraid to at least reach out to an attorney and, and talk, uh, talk to them uh, about how they can benefit from an attorney services, because really, it's that's what it's all about. You know, attorneys are expensive. We, we are expensive. I'm not going to deny that. But the, the idea is that you can really have a lot of value added by um, retaining an attorney, especially at the beginning. And there are really several different stages that it, that it becomes important to, to retain an attorney or, or seek an attorney's guidance, uh, not just at the startup. So it sounds more like a partnership. It ends up being you kind of get to know the brewery and become part of what's going on in the culture of that brewery. Is that true? Is that a like a, a true feeling? That's kind of what it sounds like. That's absolutely the goal. That's 100% what you want. The A, that's what you want in reality, and that's what you definitely want. You want the client to feel like you're their partner, not not that you're someone who's sucking away their money and not you know, <laughs> giving any return to them. You want the, the client to feel like you uh, have been a, wor- a worthwhile investment, essentially. I mean, it, it, you're not going to... A, a client's not going to be happy if the services you provide don't benefit them. And, and the, the best way to ensure that your services benefit them is to sort of view it as a partnership and view it as their success is your success. Uh, and that's, I think, you know, what, what we at Veral Dana hope to do. And I think, you know, everybody really across the, you know, the legal community and especially in the brewery side and, you know, sort of views the relationship because if you also looking at the, the way brewers cooperate, you know, it's not your traditional cutthroat necessi- necessarily. Everybody's out to do well and make a profit. Right. But it's not, you know, the corporate corporate espionage that you often find in other areas. Um, you know, it's a lot I more. I hear this a mean beard growing competition. That <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Dano's trying to get into the brewing industry just so that he can prove how luster- yeah. lustrous, lustrous. I can't even say the word. Lustrous, lustrous, luscious. <laughs> not luscious. No, <laughs> lustrous. Luscious. Illustrious. I'm not going with luscious. <laughs> also illustrious. <laughs> Um, yeah, you just want to show up the brewers. I know. I'll vote for you, Dano. I hate beers, but I'll, I'll give you my vote. <laughs> um, so, okay, so now we know kind of why the position's there. What makes what makes you right for this position? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> good question. <laughs> um, so one of the things is that we as a firm had been doing... No, you, oh, Colin, oh. you. Okay, well... <laughs> Uh, what have you done to be beery So uh, in this, your lawyering? My lawyering. Um, <laughs> this actually sort of started back a long time ago, my sort of tangential relationship to brewing beer. My dad was uh, was one of the... Are you skipping into round three? Oh, wait. Oh. Ooh. It's okay. <laughs> I, I want to hear how the story ends. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll just skip round three? Maybe. We'll see. Okay, we'll see we'll what see. happens. We'll see. Oh, oh well, okay, I, can, I can skip ahead. Basically... <laughs> Uh, I, I've been interested in uh, craft brewing and, uh, you know, did the whole industry for, for a while, in, particularly in college. Uh, my roommate decided to start trying it in college, and he, he's a lawyer as well, but he doesn't brew anymore. But it's, uh, it's something that I saw when I came to the firm that uh, 
there was we had been doing this work at the firm um, for various clients historically, but hadn't organized in one of these industry groups. And so I sort of worked with some other people at the firm to really solidify what we were doing and putting up a plan. And I guess my what I bring to the table is uh, I've sort of spent a lot of my time in, in my early, the past couple of years of sort of getting up to speed uh, on the specific industry issues brewers face in Maine uh, and and, a bro- and broader than Maine, but primarily in Maine. Um, and whether that's on the federal side or on the state side, uh, getting to know the industry and, and that's sort of, that's where I have spent my time and tried to add value uh, at a uh, to, to clients in general. So how much time do you spend in breweries? Like, during, not like after hours tasting room, but like part of your job, is it being out in the breweries, getting to know the industry from that vantage point? Or are you looking at it from a different angle? No, that so that is uh, certainly part of it. Um, but that's not something I necessarily... Uh, do for a client, but that that would be something just meeting people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're involved in the guild, uh, take advantage of all the meetings they have, and you know, just have done a lot of touring myself um, to all the awesome tasting rooms we have around here. There's a number of them. Uh, yeah, uh, but but you know, that's not normally. You know, you don't want to charge a client or do anything that you know right. isn't valuable to them. And me getting to tour around their awesome facilities normally doesn't add too, too much value unless they have a very specific issue. Right. Um, but, you know, I've, I've, I've done it just for my education and entertainment, uh, for sure. But uh, that's not a huge component of the actual work I do at all. Right. Okay. You mentioned some of the specific issues that brewers in Maine face, and I'm sort of curious about what are some of the main specific issues, or even broader issues that you mentioned, that brewers specifically have to face. Sure. Um, well, in Maine, uh, it's it's less an issue, or, and I guess I didn't phrase it quite correctly, uh, <laughs> less an, of an issue and more of a, a common sort of thread, and that's sort of how you take advantage of the way Maine is positioned from uh, how brewers are taking advantage of the way Maine is positioned to have these successful breweries. So you have uh, access to uh, plentiful natural resources. You have access to these cool industrial spaces. Uh, You have a supportive guild that's been there before and a very uh, interested populace. Uh, You know, people in Maine are really, the, the interest in craft beer has exploded. So that sort of guides overall um, what uh, these breweries are sort of facing on a day-to-day basis um, you know uh, and then br- what breweries face everywhere really is is how to navigate the, the three-tiered system how to handle your federal stuff but at the same time how do you navigate f- the state at, at Bablo you know and they have a great a lot of the brewers have great relationships with Bablo and but, but even, With who? Uh, Bablo, the uh, Bureau of Alcoholic Beverages and Lottery Operations. That's oh. the state's uh, sort of regulatory arm that okay. covers. I've uh, never. Breweries. I don't think I've ever heard it called Bablo. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. That's. Is, that's. I guess an industry inside term. I, I guess, don't know. Maybe I, I don't I, know. I, Thank you for enlightening that's us. What, that's what they call it on the website, even. So. Ooh. They, they call themselves Bablo. So. Maybe I should go to more websites. <laughs> It's actually a real Google. It's Besides a, Google, if you don't end up hiring an attorney, which I understand, if you don't, uh, I would. They have a very informative website, and they walk you through. Uh, they can help you out with some basic stuff. So. Oh, Colin, I'm not actually opening a brewery. Oh well, well, <laughs> no. This is out there to help the listeners who oh, are obviously okay. opening breweries. They all obviously they all are. Yeah. Um, all right. So, do you have any? More? I have a, some more questions. Okay, I'm sure. interested more questions. in beer and the law. So. <laughs> Alcohol, historically, has a strong relationship with legislation and the law. Um, And I'm wondering, craft beer has exploded in Maine, and the populace is interested in it, but from your experience, do you think that the the laws that we have surrounding especially craft breweries and small breweries, has that advanced in turn or alongside the growth of the industry? Uh, So I think the unfortunate thing, but the thing that has been the case since the dawn of time uh, really is that law moves 
uh, I, I think, what is it? Technology, society, then the law. So um, just the, the organization on how fast things move. Technology is always first. Society is second. The law is the last. Uh, the always. law is, you know, you have these deeply embedded legal, legal and legislative ideas that uh, function to really keep Make things sure the same. Make sure you don't sell yeah. pretzels? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Wait, it, can you explain that? <laughs> good. Okay, so sorry. This is, this is my little information. So, recently, Allagash wanted to sell pretzels at their tasting room, but because of certain laws that are in effect in the Portland area, they couldn't. But they just passed something that allows them to sell pretzels. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, yeah. The 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 board the the zone. I think it was the zoning, zoning board yeah. uh, reversed its decision, uh, uh, originally denying uh, them the ability to serve food. Uh, but my understanding is it's not serving because they could or, give it away. Okay. You can give away pretzels, but don't you dare sell a bag of pretzels until now. Now you can. Yeah. Allagash is like, we're giving away our beer. Can we uh, make somebody buy a dollar bag of pretzels, or should we give that to them, too? Yeah. Along those lines, do you have any <laughs> wild stories of, like, and you don't have to, like, betray anyone's confidence, but of brewery sort of stuck in the legal system dealing with some sort of outdated law or ridiculous instance of... of <laughs> I don't know, a legal Ridiculous. loophole. Yeah, I, I want to hear a narrative. That's oh, what I'm okay. looking for, an interesting uh, narrative. On the spot. On the spot narrative. Tell us uh, a story. <laughs> well, let's see. I mean, if you... I, one of the things I think that's going on right now um, in, in, this, in the, the legislature is uh, working to, to get... Um, uh, brew, brew, people license as brew pubs to be able to, and uh, Sean Sullivan at the Brewers Guild could explain this much better. But they're trying to to essentially allow uh, brew pubs to be able to sell uh, the same way uh, tasting rooms do uh, for for breweries. Uh, but right now, because of the licensing licensing scheme, they're not able to do so from the same. They have to have a separate premises. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And, uh, I've experienced that yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so that that is uh, that's something that you know is a remnant of this old system where part of it is the fact that uh, these taste the tasting room legislation that was passed, you know, basically carved out exceptions from the broader controlling regulatory scheme. And so since you're carving out exceptions uh, and not starting a, starting fresh, there's always going to be remnants and sort of, so now it's sort of chipping away at the remnants of, of what's left of that old system that was not favorable to, to craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries. Uh, and really, distilleries and wineries still have a lot of catching up to do uh, in from the, the legislative side. Brewery, you know, Craft brewing has been um, more successful because it's been around longer on chipping away at the uh, you know complex regulatory scheme at the state level. Cool. Um. So should we just move right into round? Do you three want to then? move into round three? Yeah. Round All three. All right. Round three. I want to hear about your dad now. Oh sure. <laughs> what is your first beer experience? Okay. Well, uh, I was. Yes, I was going to. I, I'm glad I didn't say that in the beginning. Then <laughs> you I, almost I, gave it away. I know. Ah. Uh, should have read the rules. Uh, my Just to be fair to us, we did go over the rules with you. <laughs> That's true, valid. true. We laid them out. Yeah. We laid out ground rules. And, and I, it's okay that you jumped the gun. I was just so excited. <laughs> See, it's not very lawyerly to forget the rules. So. That's what I was going to say. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's we okay. like, you're, read you're your uh, legal Break rights. the rules kind of lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, don't say that. He's <laughs> not. He follows all of the laws. Very good at his job. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Disclaimer covered. <laughs> Don't show this to your mouth. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, so, so your first beer experience. First beer experience. So my dad was, it, you know, I, I don't even remember how old I was. I, my guess is four or five. My dad got interested in uh, brewing at home, and uh, he took, he, there was this, the only place he could get uh, what he needed was at this weird herbal food store in Waterville. Uh, like, forgetting the name like rising moon or some some weird like 
er- herbalist store primarily, but for whatever reason they had uh, stuff to brew your own beer. So I remember him <laughs> taking that home, and I just remember uh, a bunch of like him just spending a ton of time washing a bunch of bottles uh, and the, the house smelling very strongly uh, for a long time thereafter and then uh, him putting them, them down in the basement and I, I was like why why does it take so long and then my dad is uh, is a huge sort of chemistry and science guy and uh, sort of went into way too much detail on how exactly uh, everything works for, for my four year old uh, brain to, to really understand but uh, that's that's sort of my earliest beer memory, and he uh, he always sort of talks about. Uh, he was always a craft beer fan from the start. He always sort of made fun of, uh, uh, especially myself in college, for di- drinking such <laughs> terrible beer. Um, and so he's uh, he was in, in the one respect in his life, uh, I would say he was ahead of the curve because he's kind of a, an old school guy. But on craft beer, he was uh, on on with the trend, I guess. <laughs> So. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Your dad's the original hipster. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a little bit. We can go with that. All right, we'll I'll, go I'll with tell that. Him that. Did he tell let you that. taste any of the basement concoctions? I I would think so. I don't know for sure. I don't. Yeah, I no. don't. That doesn't stick out in my ask. mind. Um, I will ask him. Okay. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I probably didn't like it because I uh, did not like anything at all bitter uh, until. <laughs> I was like 15. Yeah. Uh, I essentially just ate sugar uh, <laughs> for my youth. So. That's like kind of what beer is like a little, it's like yeah. scientifically, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, it was until the, got, ye- until the yeasty right, sort of sugar. They got and then there's no sugar. Of it. Yeah. Which my yeah. dad thoroughly explained to me. <laughs> and I Thanks, did not dad. understand. I, uh, I do the same thing with my four-year-old, actually. Um, she'll ask me why is the moon in the sky? And I'll give her, well, the sun went to bed. And she'll say, well, why? And then after 17 whys, if you go into a really long, in-depth explanation, they either fall asleep or they're like, oh, and they move on because they're so bored. Yeah. So that, how many times did you ask him that before he... <laughs> I think he just jumped straight to the really convoluted, long, complex answer because yeah. that's sort of how we rolled. Again, uh, original hipster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he just went straight for it. He wouldn't... That's awesome. Muck around with all the short, short answers, short and simple. So. Did you say muck around? Muck around, yeah. Muck around. Yes. Let it be noted. He You're said from muck. Me. Yes, <laughs> muck. Yes, sorry, <laughs> muck. M. Yeah, that's muck. definitely a main thing, I believe. <laughs> yeah, mucking be. around. There's a lot of muck in yeah. Maine. Yeah. That's true. It's a wet place. <laughs> true. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. yeah. Raining, snowy, yeah. muddy. Yeah. yeah. Round four? Round four. Let's round do it. Four. All right. Final round. You've had like three sips of your beer so far. Oh, geez. Better catch up. <laughs> so we're just going to ask you to rip off the band aid and um, play around uh, three sheets of the wind, um, three random questions. Now, they're not really random. I know exactly what they're going to be, but they have nothing to do with beer. Fair enough. All right. Question number one. Back when you were four years old and your dad was playing um, Mr. Science with you, what was your favorite cartoon? Favorite cartoon growing up was Doug. Uh, not probably at this point, not a uh, unique answer, but uh, that's the truth. I, I did love Doug a lot. Who was your favorite character? Uh, I mean, Doug. 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 I mean, yeah. The titular Doug uh, was pretty awesome. So uh, I remember the uh, my favorite episode. I think it, it might have been either the pilot or one of the first ones was the one where uh, Roger Klutz. Um, convinces Doug to go look for nematodes. Anybody remember that? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I remember that, that episode. That was, that, I, I still remember that episode rather somewhat vividly, which is yeah. odd. Uh, so, yeah. I don't think Roger Klutz has been mentioned on here yet, but as soon as you said his How? name, I don't know. But as soon as you said his name, the black leather jacket yep. with like... Green green oh, face, oh red, yeah. orange hair. Yeah, yeah I remember uh, that. Roger Klutz. Yeah. 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 You gotta, you gotta love the uh, creators. They're like, this guy's a jerk. Let's call him Roger Klutz. Yeah. <laughs> and this girl, she gets mayonnaise as a last name. Patty <laughs> mayonnaise. Yeah. And, First name Patty. Yeah. Second yeah. name mayonnaise. Yeah. What was Skeeter's last name? I don't. I don't know. Was it Skeeter? Like, was that his first name or his I last name? I don't. I just. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I just remember him as Skeeter. Yeah, and that he was green. Yeah. 
And I didn't realize it until now, but I think he was like the black friend, I think. Well, there's some green, but yeah. Not. There's some great articles and think pieces on the right. internet about yeah. Yeah. race and Doug. Yeah. Right, and that's I uh, I came across one of those back on an episode, and I was like, oh, oh. like it didn't even. I mean, Roger was a funny color. He was yeah. a funny Doug's like I don't know some strange color like. Yeah, yeah. No, the coloring in that was a couple strange. people were purple. I think wasn't someone yeah. purple? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah, it never even crossed my yeah. simple little mind when I was a kid yeah. that anything. But it's so funny how, like, conspiracies start and how everything... Images are powerful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, second question. Sure. <laughs> it's really loud in here. There's music. You might not be able to hear it, which is probably a good thing for this question. But what song stuck in your head right now? Oh, uh, my... I, so I don't know the name of it. Uh, my fia- You can sing it. Oh, I am not going to do that. Uh, Are you sure? Oh, 100% Your boss sure. is not listening. I, I, you would have no more <laughs> listeners if I sang that. Uh, I am a terrible singer. But my fiance is an extremely talented singer, uh, and she's singing some song um, from the musical, I think it's Chicago, uh, Roxy Hart. Um, yep, Chicago. Yeah, yeah <laughs> si- sings uh, some song, um, and uh, she's singing that a lot lately. And I have that stuck in my head. Um, Can you so. tell us anything about this song? Uh, it's it's something. I believe it's something about how she murdered her husband, uh, or like she, how she was she murdered someone and is now becoming famous for it. Wow. And because That's apparently the that plot w- of Chicago. <laughs> oh, okay. See, I know nothing about it. I just <laughs> gleaning it from the words of, of, of the of the song she sings. So. I love that. Yeah. Dano's going to have some fun YouTube searching for that one. <laughs> that, that's Dano's favorite job is to figure out what song was our guest trying Ooh, to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I wish my theater knowledge could produce the ti- the exact title right now, but yeah. I'll think of it 15 minutes well, from I, now. Yeah, I can always email it, too, because I'm sure she right. knows. <laughs> email it right to Dano, because <laughs> he's going to be hunting that thing down for a long time with <laughs> just that few clues. <laughs> Or, what yeah, maybe I'll make it a puzzle and just leave it at that. <laughs> you can all tune in to uh, go head over to the show notes and find out if Dano actually figured it out. It'll be a fun <laughs> little game of hide and seek for him. I think that sounds like a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, final question. Sure. What was the best thing you had to eat this week? Our, how are we defining week? You may define week however you would like to. Uh... <laughs> Uh, the pre- There's I'll no go with- real hard and fast rules here, except don't talk about your dad in round two. Oh. <laughs> which I which I almost broke, but I, I caught myself. Uh, uh, so I went uh, to why am I blanking on the name? Uh, it starts with an A. It's up on uh, Artemisia. Correct. High five. Wow. Good thing we brought Catherine here. Boom. That was impressive. Uh, I went there on Friday night, uh, and I had uh, their mussels, uh, which were fantastic. So that was my that was the best meal I had in the week. And I kind of lie. I always have to bring it back. What beer did you pair with it? Oh, uh, I think it was an Allagash White. <laughs> yes. So consistent. basically, any time that we see you out, we can just be like, hey, how's the Allagash tonight? No, no. <laughs> uh, you know, my other go, if there's a brown a brown on, on the menu, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll go with, that's my, I'm on a brown kick lately. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't pair that with mussels, though. No, so good no, choice, yeah, good choice. Yeah, All right, yeah. yeah. So, so. Well, that, that's it. Well, we excellent. made it to the end. I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know somehow break a lot of bar rules which is uh which (laughs) hopefully hopefully uh which is good so that was that was my goal like law bar not like drinking bar i don't think you broke any bar rules yeah yeah Yeah, no uh neither i don't want to break either type of rule it's good good thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us well thanks for having me it was a lot of fun yeah it was a great fun um maybe you can come up with some more lawyering narratives and we can sit down and talk again (laughs) absolutely i'd uh, love to come back (laughs) thank you so much and cheers cheers thank you so much to colin for sitting down with us and explaining beer lawyering to us 
Also, thank you to Liquid Riot for cheering on our fictitious brewery opening. If you are curious to see how Dano did at hunting down the clips Colin put out there, head over to our show notes at greatbeeradventure.com slash 041. 41 episodes already. It is so crazy to me. We are actually starting to plan our one-year party show. We'll give you all more information as the time gets closer. We would like to again thank our sponsor, Oak Hill Beverage, for their support. Be sure to visit oakhillbeverage.com for more information. And if you, our loyal listeners, would like to help support Great Beer Adventure, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash support. You'll be directed to our Patreon account where you can show us the love for as little as a dollar an episode. The music throughout today's episode is by Old Etc. out of Biddeford, Maine. To learn more about them, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash music. We have new things headed your way every week and can't wait to share them with you. Special thanks to our behind-the-scenes guru, Dano Pugach. Today's episode was created, produced, and edited by me, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. Have a fabulous day, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Want to know more? Be sure to find us on Instagram at Great Beer Women. If you haven't done so already, be sure to head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash subscribe to subscribe. That way, you'll be the first to know when a new episode goes live. Also, don't forget to tell your friends about us. A small party is fun, but a huge party is extraordinary. Let's get more people knowing about beer in the great state of Maine. Great Beer Adventure is part of the Great Pint Society. All right, that's it. All right, that's it. Yeah. Hooray. Good job, team. Woo. Um, I had to burp the whole time. Me too. <laughs>